good morning all uh, i am deepak assistant professor history department christ college today i am going to discuss about technological developments in medieval india as we know the medieval indian subcontinent was influenced by various forces the first influence the i i like to divide into two the first part is from the central asia another one from europe then uh central asians ruled indian subcontinent for significant part of time since early 13th century these central asians were uh turkic nomads central asians were turkic nomads but they were highly persianized so the persia was kind of the cradle of uh, middle eastern civilization in those days so with the new rulers the influence of persian culture start to influence indian uh, tech, scientific and technological scenario then we have to see what sort of development happened here under central asian in central asian in india as we know it's very common it's it's very familiar that almost all i would like to start with the war strategies what sort of changes happened to war after the coming of central asians into indian subcontinent as we know the indian forces were not capable enough to resist almost all central asian invasions for the quite long time so central asians were highly successful in defeating much bigger indian armies why so because central asians armies were always less in number because they fight in a foreign land they fought in a foreign land but they were not able to defeat they were not in position to defeat indian armies much bigger indian armies they fight in their own native turf why so it's from our close observation of the two side we can see that it is primarily due to technological superiority or tech strategic advancement with the central asian armies first of all i already mentioned that our central asian rulers were all persianized turkic nomads they were descendants of turkic nomads later they become muslims then later persianized these central asian nomads were very good in domesticating horses they were quite natural with horses central asian armies were simply the cavalry cavalry again cavalry so they were all very good cavalry men again with cavalry they introduced iron stirrup this iron stirrup Uh, later this iron stirrup spread all over the world but it's first used by the central asians because indians were not uh, not so familiar with that iron stirrup then iron stirrup iron stirrup iron stirrup means that in stirrup were uh, the cavalry men put put his uh, foot so it it gives him a guarantee that he never unseated when he fought with someone else then other factor that central asians with central asians the usage of uh, the armor helmet uh, war boots also uh, become quite widespread because indians know the use of helmet or war boots or like uh, armor since the time of kushans but it was not quite widespread but with the central asian with the arrival of central asian army it become quite widespread even again with central asian we have seen the coming of mounted archers because mounted archers were kind of nightmare in the medieval days not only in india even in iran even in the europe we have seen with the mongols the mongol army was the consists of mounted archers because even the same central asian turks of india also follow the same style these mounted archers mean that they they can shoot arrow when they ride horse that strategy that that sort of like a uh, uh, that sort of techniques they had with the horse riding because they were quite proficient horse riders which i already mentioned but other indian cavalry men also uh, ride horses but they were not good mounted archers because they never had the te- technique so our soldiers don't know even though we had the big number we never know we don't we don't know how to resist mounted archers there is no answer for mounted archers because indian armies also have the the cavalry wing but moreover cavalry wing is there, but we use lots of elephants and infantry men too 
so it is naturally slow down the uh, movement of our army but central asian said very good central asian army as i mentioned earlier central asian army is full of cavalry men that cavalry men were quite proficient in their war strategies and their techniques primarily because they are the descendants of nomads that we have to keep in mind with the war you have to remember we have to remember the use of uh, boots armors helmet become popular among indians then the other aspect that the iron stirrup then mounted archers so these sort of new things appeared in indian battle scene all over india all over indian subcontinent then we go to the uh, other aspect the agrarian sector what happened in agrarian sector after the coming of central asian muslims in agrarian sector it's quite there are several different things happened but i like i would i would like to mention here one the most important thing the rahat or water wheel rahat we call it persian water wheel if you check somewhere you will see that persian water wheel this india in, in even in agrarian sector this is persian water wheel primarily used for irrigation purpose india we, we use persian water in the, in the indians were also using the water wheels but then this persian water wheels were much bigger and more efficient so it become popular here with our level of central asian muslims because the persian water wheel or rahat it call in persian rahat the rahat was quite popular in persia in those days so with our level of central asian muslim rahat accompanied them it's become quite common seen in indian agriculture sector or indian countryside for quite long time till the arrival of british even early part of 20th century the rahat was visible in different parts of north india then in the india was like the the homeland of cotton the weaving industry is also influenced by central asians again from persia central with persia with central asians again from persia they introduce spinning wheel and cardus bow spinning wheel we call in malayalam charka these two new uh, machines so these two new techniques completely revolutionize our weaving industry then only in 19th century the or 19th century or early 20th century the british uh, industrial uh, automatic machines replaced our uh, spinning wheel and the cardus bow but that the spinning wheel and cardus bow influence was quite evident in indian weaving industry for long time for centuries because first it's introduced by central asian rulers then central asians also in, in, introduce another thing that thing really originated in china later with silk route it arrived in persia from persia with central asians arrived in india that is paper in turkish they call paper kagaz even in hindi we call it kagaz i i think from the kagaz the malayalam term for paper kadalas derived it's also keep in our mind till the coming of paper we were using palm leaf for writing uh scriptures or whatever it is scriptures or painting whatever we were using palm leaf then with central asian's paper arrived in india it also revolutionized our literary sector that's for the central asian influence then we go to uh, other aspects how much european influence indian technological scene in the medieval time here i would like to discuss about the influence of portuguese in the case of ship building in 16th century portuguese army was just like the modern modern days or contemporary days american navy portuguese navy was quite big it was kind of invincible in oceans portuguese were really good in making ocean sailing ships that ships were it was not simply capable for trading it was also capable for carrying cannons or in other words cannon carrying ships or galleons these cannon carrying ships were these ships were quite strong because we have to remember the medieval day ships were made of wood not made, not made with made of wood not like the modern day ship no, modern day ships made of steel but in medieval days ships were not like the modern day ships it was sailing ships so sailors so it was made of wood that wood ships can withstand the recoiling effect of cannon this 
cannon carrying ships carrying not only one cannon it was carrying so many cannon these cannons were this cannon carrying ships were good in carrying cannons not only good in carrying cannon at the time of firing the the ships were quite strong enough to withstand the recoil effect again europeans were not only portuguese even the italians they were really good in casting guns quality guns they were also really good in casting cannons there are lo lots of evidence that there are lot lots of sources mentioned about uh, european uh, hiring of european cannon makers or gun makers into indian army even in even moguls even vijayanagar everyone utilize their service uh but indians but one aspect that indians were very good in copying european techniques in the case of casting guns or casting ca cannons but indians never try to upgrade whatever they learn that's the difference between uh, europeans and indians in this sense till 19th century the backbone of indian ar indian army was cavalry backbone of indian army was cavalry we had infantrymen carrying gun bandujki we call them bandujki but the bandujki was kind of lower compared to the cavalry men but europeans were good in upgrading their guns or upgrading their cannons but that helped them to conquer world in the 19th and 20th century but unfortunately our indians were not indians were good in copying the european technology but we were not i don't know we were not ready to upgrade it because we may not find it useful to upgrade we were proud of our cavalry or strength of our cavalry but later time it clearly shows in the early 19th century when indian army fought with discipline gun carrying or cannon carrying european soldiers because we were not able to defeat them then again come to the household europeans introduced in 17th century they introduced drinking glasses then uh, spectacles then um, ringing glasses spectacles uh, house clock wall clocks mirrors so many things but it they it's not for the popular usage it's primarily they brought it for uh, the use of nobles and kings it's kind of gift but it's it's like a fancy toys in india but um, it never got popular but indians it 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 arrived here in 17th century because these were kind of novelties in 17th century europe nobles used it that's why the european merchants brought it here for in the, the use of indian nobles but unfortunately somehow indians were not really interested in it because they find it fancy but we never used it further then later the wall clocks and you know the spectacles got popular only under british in the late 19th and early 20th century but we have to remember that this sort of stuff drinking glasses or spectacles so uh, the wall clocks is not really introduced by the british it was here since the time of portuguese so sorry not the portuguese like a portuguese dutch early 17th century we have to remember that but it never got popular because indian allies took it took it as gift that's all that's why i would like to stop my uh, technological because it's a very long it's a very broad subject but due to the lack of time i try to uh, summarize the sum i i try to stop here but before concluding the thing i have to look for the what sort of limitations indian saving like uh, technology so the so what sort of shortcomings indian saving with the uh, medieval technology especially in comparison with the uh, europeans as i mentioned before indians were good in copying you know like uh, european war tactics like especially the uh, cannon uh, ca can building of cannon and building of uh, guns casting of cannons or casting of guns that area where we we were interested but we are not really interested in the other other aspects because i missed one the water pump europeans also introduced water pump because it was quite popular in europe those days it really revolutionized european ag agrarian scene but uh, they introduced what uh, water pumps here but unfortunately even though india was an agrarian country but i don't know we don't know we don't we don't know we don't really know that our indian rulers don't find water pumps very useful so we never used so we can see that 
in 16th century or 17th century india was much richer than the, than the contemporary europe it was quite powerful too 16th century 17th century india was quite powerful too even both uh, by by money or by force it was quite powerful so indians felt some sort of superiority complex over europeans so they underestimate them that's what i say they are proud of their cultural superiority or part of the superiority i don't know but they find they are superior than the european merchants or whatever so they don't find their except the war thing they don't find other european uh, things are not really attractive it's not useful it's we can use it as toys there is no it's not necessary so they they then other factor that indians were not upgraded stuff because they copy the uh, european cannon so the, they they learn how to make cannon just like europeans they learn how to make guns just like europeans but they never tried to upgrade it there was no upgradation then we we never try to replace people with machine but europe europeans always look for upgradation the 16th century 17th century if you go for the european technological scene you will see that there is an upgradation throughout then the big jump started in industrial revolution industrial revolution is not simply started suddenly but there is you know the some sort of history behind it but for the to 300 400 years technologically speaking they simply uh over, over took much richer asian side but late 18th and early 19th century it's crystal clear that technological technological side europeans are far advanced than uh, eastern countries both not only india even china they were quite advanced but indians indians never try to upgrade whatever they have then they never try to replace skill laborers with machines because that's other thing because india don't need machines like water pump because we have a uh, mass population even then in the in that world standard not now even 17th century or 16th century 18th century indian subcontinent had a huge population compared to europe we also had enough cheap skill laborers so our nobles never found that uh simply you know the we, our nobles f- never found it's like a advantage to uh, replace these laborers with the uh, skill laborers with some sort of machines like uh, automatic stuff because we are not really interested in it because we had enough skill laborers it's it's kind of like uh, they are happy with that because they are not looking to trade somewhere else but um, europeans always try for the upgradation because again even in the europe iron smith got with the the the, the growing of cities the traders like iron smith got uh, respect and money but that's not the case with the indian iron smith in the caste hierarchy their position was quite low so they never find its kind of whatever they do they remain as iron smith so they never found that you know recognition or respect which they enjoyed in europe so we have to understand that and then one more aspect why india lacks in india we medieval time we mix religion with science so the rationality there was no rationality in certain sense because we we can't separate science and religion in medieval days but that's not the case with the post reformation europe post reformation europe was like a, they were more rational because they can separate science from religion so their rationality helped them in developing science in the coming days it helped them in the coming centuries but we got stuck up somewhere in 16 or 17, 15 or 16th century but we never got any sort of upward mobility because there, there are several factors i discuss especially the mixing of science with religion is uh, the important thing because it naturally curtailed down the rationality the rationality for the block our way for developing our technology or upgrading our technology in the further further level so to cleverly clearly in the late 18th and early 19th century when british challenge indian forces we were not in position to oppose them just like when central asians attacked india we were not position to oppose them in the in 13th century it's the same like in the late 18th and early 19th century the less number european forces were 
they were they, they can easily defeat much bigger number indian forces because they had the same technological superiority so the history repeats again so with that i would like to stop my class i hope everyone enjoyed so we will meet again thank thank you very much